Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video where today we're going to be looking at and reviewing this right here. This is the Moza Mini S Essential smartphone gimbal, which is the latest smartphone gimbal from Goodson. And what makes this one so original and stand out from the crowd is that it's actually a foldable smartphone gimbal, which makes the footprint a lot smaller than pretty much any other smartphone gimbal on the market at the moment. But for the price of £80, we're going to find out if this thing's actually any good. So let's start off by looking at the design and the build quality of the Moza Mini S. The folding aspect is actually done really well on this gimbal. It feels nice and solid when we're folding it and it has a nice sliding lock to hold it all in place. The arm also has a locking mechanism built into it which is nice and it stops it from flopping around. I mean this locking mechanism isn't perfect and it still does rattle around a little bit but that's a lot less than most other gimbals on the market which just kind of spin around and flop around in the wind where this kind of holds itself. This gimbal is made of a plastic material which is fairly smooth to the touch so it feels nice in the hand but I have noticed that it can mark quite easily. Also there isn't a grip on the handle so it can get fairly slippery if we're using it for a long time. The gimbal itself is fairly light and weighs about 500 grams and it can take mobile phones up to 260 grams so pretty much any new current smartphone even with a case attached would be able to fit on here. You will notice that there aren't any knobs or adjustments on the gimbal arms to balance your phone as all you have to do is slide your phone into the clamp. Just make sure that the left and right balance is pretty even when we insert our phone. If it falls one way, slide the phone in the opposite direction. Just be aware when inserting and positioning your phone that you can't see the motors in your footage as this could ruin your shots. And it's super easy if we want to switch between the normal filming mode and a portrait filming mode. All we have to do is move the clamp with the phone in by 90 degrees. This is ideal for say Snapchat and Instagram and then we can switch it back easily to go back to a normal filming mode. But just a side note, I did notice that you can only fold the gimbal in the landscape position as when it's in the portrait position the clamp hits the handle. But when our phone's in and in the landscape position you will now notice that this back arm and motor has been offset slightly so we can actually see the charging port of the mobile phone. Most gimbals used to obstruct this so we can never get to that charging port. Now on this gimbal they've off-centered it we can actually get to that charging port of the phone so we can keep it charged or even plug in a microphone when we're using this gimbal. Also on this same arm you will find a micro USB port which is one of the options you have to connect your phone to this gimbal. It does come with a cable to connect it to your headphone jack of your phone. But most new smartphones don't actually have headphone jacks anymore but there is another way to connect your phone to the gimbal and that is through Bluetooth through their app but I'll talk about that later. There is also another port on the left hand side of the handle which is USB-C and is used to charge the gimbal. It takes about three hours to charge and gives you about eight hours of use which is a really long time and it would definitely last you all day. And this USB-C charging cable is supplied in the box but as you can see it's a very very short cable. Also in the box you will find a mini tripod which is very plasticky and flimsy but it does do the job just fine. But I do find it slightly strange when we put the gimbal down with the tripod attached it kind of sits at this very strange front facing front falling angle. I assume it's to keep the center of gravity in the middle of the gimbal but for me it seems slightly more unstable and slightly scary considering our phone is attached to it. Also in the box there is a cloth carry case. So now let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. On the left we have the Moza Mini S and on the right we have handheld. And in this shot this is a walking shot. And as you can see the Moza Mini S is very smooth but also the one on the right is very smooth as well being handheld because the built-in stabilization of new current smartphones is really well done. But now when we take a look at a running shot you can see that the Moza Mini S really starts to shine here. But notice that the Mini S there is still a slight bit of wobble as well. But it's far better than the handheld shot. Now one thing I personally think all gimbal companies do wrong is how complicated it is to actually switch between the different modes for the gimbal. We, the users of the gimbal, just want an easy and clear way to change between the modes and a clear indication to let us know what mode we're in on the gimbal. But time after time, gimbal companies just seem to overcomplicate the matter by having one press up meaning something, two presses up meaning something else, three presses up means something else again, there's left, right, up, down, I feel like it's just way too complicated and the only indication is by a flashing LED. So you need to remember how many flashes means what mode you're in. There should just be a clearer indication and an easier way to switch between these modes and the Moza Mini S a central gimbal kind of is the same as all the others it's just a little bit confusing and it just means you have to read the manual and then memorize 
what does double up mean and triple up mean and if you're in triple up mode can you then do double left mode it just seems way too complicated for me but anyway they do have a cool upgrade on this gimbal and that is on the back you will see they have finally added a trigger which is a great design choice as it makes using some of the features a lot easier to use so when we first turn the gimbal on by pressing the red power button on the left hand side the gimbal will start to pan the phone left or right but not up and down Holding the trigger down on the back of the gimbal now means that we can pan the phone left, right and up and down. A double press means that the phone and the gimbal will recenter itself. If I double press and then hold, it will enter all lock mode. That basically means that no matter where I put the gimbal, the phone is always going to face that same direction. We can also use the joystick on the front of the gimbal to point the camera in the direction we want. But one thing to point out here is that the arms on the gimbal can only turn a certain amount and won't fully spin all the way around, which is a shame. Then using the buttons on the front, we can go into all the other modes. But like I said, knowing those different modes does get slightly confusing and all you have to do is read the manual. So I'm not gonna go into detail of all the different modes this gimbal has to offer, but I will put them in the description down below if you wanna quickly read what different modes this gimbal has. But those couple of trigger buttons, trigger modes are the main ones I use with this gimbal. And another thing to quickly mention is that when we actually connect our phone via the app to the gimbal, there's actually even more options by the buttons on the front. So as you can see, it does get slightly confusing. And to connect our phone to the gimbal, we have to use the Moza Genie app. And once you open the app, we can then connect our phone to the gimbal. And once the phone is connected to the gimbal via the app, we can then use a few more options on the front to actually control the camera of our phone. We can start, stop recording, switch between video and photo mode. We've got zoom options on the left hand side. We can watch playback and stuff. There's lots of different options to actually control our phone. The app does offer lots of different features to really get the most out of your phone and the gimbal. There are a few standout features to me, one being the manual mode. This gives you a more professional control over the camera, so you can easily select the ISO, shutter speed and the white balance for your shot. Another feature is the advanced time lapse. This allows you to select multiple points and then set the duration of your moving time lapse. Also, at the bottom left there is a button for object tracking. All you have to do is draw a box around anything you want to track and the gimbal will make sure that it stays in shot. And this actually works surprisingly well. There are a few other features which I wouldn't personally use but others might. One being filters, so you can add coloured Instagram style effects over the top of your footage. And the other is there is an option to live stream straight from this app. So overall, what do I think of the Moza Mini S Essential Smartphone Gimbal from Goodson? Personally, I think this is actually a really, really good buy. Having all those different features built into the app and all the different modes built into the actual gimbal can really help elevate your smartphone filmmaking. The modes and the different dials and stuff does get slightly confusing. And if you're really gonna be putting it through its paces, you still get some kind of handheld kind of wobbly shots and stuff, but it's still a hell of a lot better than just filming by hand. And having the original kind of unique design and all fold down making it super small and compact makes it ideal for going on holiday or taking to festivals so your smartphone filmmaking will be elevated because the actual gimbal will make the shots look a lot better than just filming by hand so i'd love to know what you think of this thing in the comment section down below i think it's a good buy for the price of 80 pounds but let me know what you think in the comment section down below and if you are new here please hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified when my next videos go live and until next time keep on creating